Welcome. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the area between two curves. And so let's start out uh, by drawing a graph. Um, and let's say that we have two functions on this graph. Uh, let's draw a function f of x. And let's draw another function. And we'll call that one g of x. All right. Now, in uh, calculus one, what we learn about is how to find the area under a curve uh, between a point A and B. And we do that by taking the definite integral. But what if we wanted to find the area that is trapped between these two curves, between the x values A and B? So we want to find the area between the two curves. Well, let me draw another picture for you that I think will help you to understand how we would actually do this. Um, notice that this is the same as, if I have my function f up here again, this is f of x, and I have an a and I have a b, and I have some area under that curve. And then the other curve, my g of x, uh, let's say that this is g of x, and I have a and I have b, and I have the area under g of x. Notice that the area that's trapped between f of x and g of x is the area under f of x, all of this area, minus this area that's under g of x. And you can see it right here. If I take all the area under f of x and then I take out the area that's underneath g of x, I end up with the area that's trapped in between the two. Now, <clears throat> when we're dealing with uh, functions in general, you have to be a little bit careful uh, that your function is always above the x-axis if you're talking about positive area. That's not necessarily the case anymore uh, when you talk about area between curves. You don't necessarily care so much if it's above the x-axis, if it's below the x-axis. The only thing you care about is which is on top and which is on the bottom. And the reason for that is this. We know that the way that we compute area is we're adding up a bunch of rectangles, correct? That we're taking a ream on sum, we're adding rectangles. And let me just draw a rectangle right here. And let's say we're adding up a bunch of these rectangles. How do I compute the area of a rectangle? Well, it's the width, which is some positive number, times the height. But the height in this case is the top of that rectangle minus the bottom of that rectangle, and that's some distance. That distance is going to be positive whether we're above the x-axis, if I'm sitting down here below the x-axis, it doesn't matter. The difference, that height, is positive. As long as I put the top function first and then subtract the bottom function, that will always be a positive number. So that means that when I'm calculating the area between two curves, uh, how do I calculate the area under this curve f of x? Well, it's the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And how do I calculate the area under g of x? Well, it's the integral from a to b of g of x dx. And so how would I compute the, inter, uh, the area between the curves f of x and g of x? I just subtract, we said. And so the area that's trapped between these two curves is going to be the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx, where f of x is the top function and g of x is the bottom function. All right, now let's talk a little bit about if we have a different situation where we have a function of f of y and a function g of y um, that are not functions necessarily of x, but they are functions of y. So now maybe we have this sort of a situation. We have a function here 
we have another function here. Let's call this guy f of y. Let's call this one g of y. And we're integrating from some y value a to some y value b. Well, this is very similar to what we had before. The area that we're trying to find in this case is here. All right, so we're trying to find the area between this function of y and this function of y. And the only difference here, this is gonna be very similar to what we did when they were functions of x. And in fact, it's exactly the same. The only thing we have to be careful of is, well, which of these two functions is the top function? And sometimes this can be a little bit tricky, and I have a little trick to remember which it is. And that is, if you look at a number line, like just your typical number line here, the reals, and, uh, and I ask you which way is the positive direction, well, that's an easy question. Positive direction is to the right. So big things are on the right, little things are on the left. So if I say, what's the upper function or the bigger function, then if I drew a number line just right through the middle of these two curves, the big thing is the thing on the right. The little thing is the thing on the left. So we want to take the integral of the upper function or the big function minus the little function. In other words, if we're trying to find area in this case, I'm gonna take the integral from A to B of the bigger function, which is f of y, minus the little function, which is g of y, dy. And now um, we've got it. This is how we would compute the area between two functions of y. All right, and there's one more case I'd like to talk to you about really quick before we get into some examples. And that is, what if we have a situation like this where actually f of x and g of x cross each other between a and b. So it's not uh, the case that one of them's always the top and one of them's always the bottom. Well, for part of the way, f of x is the top function, but then at c, it becomes the bottom function. Well, in this case, then we need to break it up into two integrals. And we need to just look at, well, what happens between a and c, and then what happens between c and b. So if I wanted to find the area between the two curves here, then the area would be equal to, well, the integral from A to C. And in between A and C, I'd ask the question, well, which is the function that's on top? Well, in this case, F of X is on top. So I want to take F of X minus G of X DX. And then what I want to do is add on the other piece. So I'm going to add on the integral from c to b of, again, the top function minus the bottom function. But in this case, the top function is g of x, and the bottom function is f of x. So I take the top function, g of x, minus the bottom function, f of x, dx. And so if I took this integral plus this integral, I'm going to get the area that's trapped between those two